I'm Rob, the product specialist for APC at a company called Drive Control. Drive Control is a distributor uh, of the APC infrastructure product, uh, currently the largest distributor in Africa uh, and South, South Africa. <coughs> we distribute uh, the entire range of APC that's available within South Africa from UPSs to infrastructure to cooling to uh, power management um, and uh, all the X issues that go with that. Uh, we actually have a uh, 4,000 products within our range. APC is actually the global leader in uh, IT infrastructure. Now, just to sort of position IT infrastructure, what it is, is if you look at the sort of anatomy of a, com anatomy of a company, um, a company today, your, your, your general company, is naturally made up of its people. We're supported by the processes within the company. IT enables the processes, but what holds up the IT? That's your infrastructure, right. that's where APC comes in, which is your power, your cooling, your data rack infrastructure, and so forth, and your management of your power. So you're much more than just UPS? APC is way more than just UPS, way, way more than just UPS. But APC stands for American Power Conversion, doesn't it? They do. They started off with UPS, right. and they've uh, broadened their, their, their spectrum of where they're actually going, going to. And uh, I mean, <clears throat> They're globally known, most of the uh, R&D is done with companies like Dell, with HP, with IBM and so forth. So you, most of their products actually fit all, everything is like a, hand in, a glove in hand fit with all those type of products. Right. So they're, they're, they're the leading edge, um, they're what you need. Um, they, they're the flavor of the month in Europe. You know, you speak to any European company and everything is standardized on APC these days. Matches uh, people have standardized on IBM or HP. How did the um, blackouts at the beginning of the year affect or load shedding affect um, APC? Yeah, we had an unprecedented spike. Um, our sales rocketed. Um, and what it has actually done is purely made people aware of the acronym UPS or backup power. You know? um, there's nothing like a, a lack of something that will make you aware that you're actually, you, know, you actually need power right. you know, when there's a lack of it. Um, and we, I mean, UPS has been around a long time, but no one has really understood their importance. You know, it's typically something that sticks stays under your desk or in your data center, out of sight, out of mind, and you just really hope that it works. You know, when when the power goes down, right. and now the power teachers are sort of just heightened everyone's awareness of the importance of that backup power. Just let's look on the, on the power side. The UPS would be the most basic, and then work up to. Could you explain all the sort of categories that, that there are in that? Yeah, well, you know, within within backup power, <clears throat> you're actually totally correct. It's more than just the, the UPS. Uh, it is all the technologies that support clean power to right. your IT environment, such as surge protection, such as automatic uh, voltage regulation. What people um, don't realise is, you know, everyone's aware of the power spikes, which affects our all our accessories and our IT equipment, but what we don't see is the lack of power. So very often we aren't getting 220 volts to the equipment that is, is being run on the power system, on the power grid, which means your computers, your TVs, your, your, your microwaves, uh, because they aren't getting 220 volts to work at the optimal uh, power, they need to work harder. They may be getting 208 volts, so they've got to work harder to perform in the way that you expect them to perform. Okay? which is then minimizing their lifespan. Right, so it damages them. It damages them. Okay. So APC also sell automatic voltage regulation uh, regulators where the, uh, um, the, the, the particular unit will pick up a low voltage, it will then pump that up back to 220 volts and feed its, its connected uh, equipment with proper 220 volts, uh, voltage, thus saving the life of it. Absolutely. People haven't been aware of that. And that that's, in my opinion, one of the bigger problems we've had for actually quite a while, okay. a number of years, if you haven't noticed. So is, the, is that in an enormous common or garden UPS, or is, do you have to go and look for it? Well, you know, the, the automatic voltage regulation is built into a, a larger portion of the uh, APC UPSs, right. as well as they are sold as purely separate units, right. apart from a UPS. So, uh, so in fact, that brings me to, to an interesting point. What if I wanted to buy myself a UPS, and all I wanted to do is is, is make sure that I'm protecting my uh, my kit, mm -hmm. whether it's a PC or whatever. What should I be looking for? Well, it all depends. You know, um, a UPS is uh, you get so many different types of UPSs. You get some UPSs that are purely built to give you enough time to shut down. Yeah. 
the load equipment in a nice in a stateful way okay and then others that will enable you to run for a period so the factors you got to look at is what do you actually want to do you want to keep working during a, lo a load shedding period okay and then how long do you want to keep working you know some people are saying half an hour is fine others say I want to work for four hours you know and you have various UPSs for the various times okay and then over and above that you have UPSs that are really dumb you know it's the type of UPS you put under your desk okay and uh, if the power goes down it'll run your PC for a while then you have UPSs aimed at your network IT network infrastructure that will keep your servers and switches and so forth running you then also have UPSs that are aimed at your uh, um, application base where they run large databases okay so it all depends on what you actually need it, 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 it's a very broad base of UPS right. you know it's like saying a vehicle you get four by fours you get trucks this that and the other so UPS you've got to really get specific and go out and see exactly what you actually need you can't just go and buy a UPS and assume, assume it's going to work right I, I saw an interesting press release that came out a while ago from one of your competitors and that was warning that um, just because you're buying a UPS you're not buying a lightning protection unit how does all that work? Because one thinks, okay, my UPS will protect me against lightning surges and spikes and whatnot. Not true? Um, no, no, it is true with some of the brands. Um, some brands of UPS, uh, especially inverters, uh, don't contain lightning protection or surge protection. Um, the fortunate thing is when you do get a surge or lightning shot, the first thing that goes is either the UPS or the inverter, and hopefully the load equipment is protected. But all the APC equipment is surge protected. Um, what kind of pricing are we looking at if from, from basic all the way through? Okay, you're something. probably looking at uh, a cost starting from 500 Rand per unit. Right. And it goes up to within the hundreds of thousands, depending on what you actually want the UPS to do for you. Yeah? Um, a lot of the UPSs contain management software and management cards that you would now connect onto your LAN or WAN and you can manage it okay. remotely. And I'm speaking about even the smaller guys not even just the big guys. So it absolutely depends on what you want. Right, okay. And the uh, other products, when did they enter the rack servers and all those kind of markets? When did they start doing that? You know, <clears throat> to my knowledge, they've been doing it for a very long time. Okay. Um, but they're just not known for that? I mean, the they're not known in this country for that. Okay. But even in this country, the racks and the, everything else has been available since they've actually been here in the country. Well, we have a huge uh, increase in sales there. What's actually happened is the, with the advent of the blade server, right. your old data center is no longer capable of uh, supporting blade servers uh, through power, okay, as well as cooling. Okay? Uh, at the moment with, with the blade servers, what you need is intelligent power. Yes. Power that you can manage remotely. Literally switch a, a blade server on or off remotely. Okay? Um, cooling, a normal aircon can't do either. A blade server needs a minimum of 75 liters of cool air per second. So your normal aircon is simply not good enough and simply keeping your data center cool is no longer uh, viable. Right. Okay? You now have to create an environment within the data center. You have to create what they call hot and cold hours for your blade servers. In other words, the front part of your blade server or the front door of your rack ideally should be around 18 degrees. Okay? However, the back door of your rack ideally should be 35, which most people are saying, oh, but that's very hot. Well, it's, it's actually a minimum of 35 degrees for these blade servers to work optimally. So it's changing the thinking, it's changing the whole data center where you know, all the guys now buying blade servers are suddenly finding out, hang on a second, my data center isn't adequate for my blade server. And we have a huge spike now in sales on your infrastructure or your uh, data center equipment. Right. How, if any, if in any way, is, um, is uh, APC involved in green IT? Absolutely. If you look at their website, everything is green around APC. Everything they, 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 they create is around uh, not just uh, power, uh, backup power, but efficient power. Right. Efficient power, everything is green. The cooling, everything, it's, it's, it's all that. It's a huge initiative with APC right now.